everyone, and welcome to In Studio. I'm Emmeline, and today we are in studio with a very special guest. James Dunbar is an accomplished pianist and composer. You've heard his work on the show, but we've not yet met him. Hello, James! Hi, everybody. It's great to meet you. Great Thank to see you. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. It's a great pleasure. So, we know each other because we used to go to the same high school, and um, I remember... <laughs> um, coming up to you in the halls one day, and I said, oh my gosh, James, I just saw this video of you playing the piano, and you were something crazy like 11 years old, and it was better than I'd ever heard anyone play. And of course, your reaction was, how did you find this video of me? <laughs> You're like, what? And I was like, it was so good. Um, that was a very normal reaction for you to have. <laughs> so, you um, have been playing the piano for a really long time. When did you start playing it? I started when I was about uh, seven years old. And so in, uh, in about three days, next Wednesday, I'll be playing for a decade, which is kind of crazy to believe. That's like a huge mark. That's awesome. Yeah. So I'm I feel like piano that. is usually one of the first instruments people take lessons for or um, start to learn. But yeah. usually they follow Royal Conservatory books and they stay more classical. So I'm interested to know, when did you start playing jazz, and what about jazz attracted you to it? Well, um, I actually, well, when I was very young, I'm like five, six years old, um, my dad was teaching me the drums, because he's a drummer. Uh, and so he was just kind of trying to get me on the drums, playing around stuff. But obviously, you can't have like two drummers in the same household. You know, my mom would just leave. So, <laughs> so we had to switch me over to an instrument where we could play together. Uh, and so we picked the piano, you know. Our relatives had pianos that they that they wanted to throw away, so we just decide on it. And um, and the blues scale, the was actually the only thing my dad knew how to play on the piano. So I would play that over and over again. I just like started listening to the blues and the rock music and all that. And uh, and I started. I didn't start out with jazz. I started out with uh, the boogie woogie blues stuff like that. And then kind of transitioned into it when I knew more fundamentals about the piano and the music. That's awesome. So I actually, I don't have a lot of jazz records, but I brought out two because you're going to be on the show. So oh, great. <laughs> gotta decorate the place accordingly. <laughs> um, okay, so correct me if I'm wrong, but I saw that you started gigging regularly when you were eight. Is that true? <laughs> uh, no. Uh, <laughs> that's hilarious, but no. <laughs> um, I started gigging regularly when I was about 11 years old. Okay, so still crazy young. Got it. <laughs> um, so that obviously isn't a lot of years of playing the piano. Um, how did you just, when you started going to gigs, was it something that was turning people off you, your age, or was it making you more of an attraction? It was a, uh, it's a, it's a gimmick, you know? The kid plays the piano, or the kid sings, the kid plays guitar. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, the kid plays the, car, the guitar, you know. It's a it's a huge gimmick. You know, we have all these shows like America's Got Talent, The Voice, all this, and it's just like tiny kids singing their hearts out or playing their hearts out. So it was a... So when people saw it, you know, I was in some, some club playing the piano. My legs were swinging because I couldn't even reach the ground. It's like they, they went crazy. They loved it. That was... Yeah. And when you were you know, 11, 12, did you know this? Or was this something your kind of, your parents knew would work? But like, were you aware of this going on that people just loved it because you were young? Well, so that's kind of a, uh, that's an actual really cool, like existential thing that I had to kind of deal with and really think about for a long time. Because, you know, if you're, uh, if you're in the stage of development, 11, 12, 13, 14, where you're kind of learning how to, um, you're kind of learning the boundaries of what to say, what to flaunt, you know. I mean, you know, we all remember the, I have more money than you. No, I have more money than you on the middle school playground sort of thing, you know. So, uh, I don't know, on a psychological level, I, I kind of knew that it was crazy and weird. But I just thought I was God. So, like, it didn't <laughs> matter, you know. <laughs> That's really interesting that, like, that kind of registered with you. Um, well, that's a really new thing, too, the fact that it is, actually. <laughs> <laughs> when I was 
11, I was, like, going to my dance class. Like, I was not thinking about anything else. <laughs> I think I was, like, trying to do math homework. That was the hardest thing for me. <laughs> um, okay, so... So you started playing... Um, well, I should say you started. You were playing for a few years at a Loblaws. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, it's mental. <laughs> <laughs> was this something that you were getting paid for or was it just no. like there was a piano no. there and you showed up yeah so that's actually that's what led me to my uh, my first gig and my intro into the sort of the show world was um down at a uh, St. Clair West there's a Loblaws and uh on the second floor of this Loblaws there's a baby grand piano and it's incredibly out of tune it's the worst ever I've been trying to plead them to fix it but basically when my mom would go shopping she would take me with her but I didn't want to go shopping. I would just go up and play the piano. And so the more she went shopping, the more I played the piano upstairs until eventually a booking agent was just adding to their schedule, like right next to the piano and I started playing it. So he got me a gig there. That is incredible. Like what a story. So it wasn't your mom being like, go play the piano. It was you? Yeah, no, it was mostly me. She actually wasn't there for most of it. She was like down one level uh, she's got like picking up the groceries and then she'd go up and check on me and go down and stuff because she, she can hear the piano like throughout the entire building. So if she knew I was playing it, then she's like, okay, he's, he's chilling. He's safe. <laughs> so Ori Dagon was the person. Dagon, yeah. you. Um, did he just like, how did, how, what, what was this conversation like with, <laughs> with this little kid? Um, Ori Dagon is a, a very, very amazing a uh, young musician, um, he ran the 120 Diner, and uh, and yeah, so basically he was actually sitting in this Loblaws. I still don't know why he was sitting in the Loblaws at St. Clair West, but he was adding to his, his he was adding to his booking cap calendar for this new club that he ran that he needed acts for, and I was about ten feet away playing a baby grand piano, <laughs> playing jazz. <laughs> So, uh, so he kind of came up to me and went, hi, this is, uh, it's great to meet you, you know, introduced himself to my mom, and then uh, scheduled just, uh, I think, a couple gigs at the 120 later that week. Right, so for people who don't know, the 120 Diner is, it's a pretty well-known jazz hub. I feel like a lot of people, especially because it's in Toronto, like, it attracts a lot of people. Um, unfortunately, it's now closed permanently due to COVID. But when you were playing there, was it the same sort of thing of like everyone like what's going on? How is this kid playing it? Or did it did you end up seeing the same people? Was it more like regular? Like what was the kind of reaction that you were getting? Well, I didn't play the 120 uh, nearly as often as I played other you know clubs around that area, um, because basically I played the 120 and there was not that many people there. There was a few, but you know it was just kind of like a laid back, chill sort of vibe. And, uh, and then another manager was in contact because I played that show. And they got me over to the Jazz Bistro. And that's where I really stepped up my game. That's where I played weekly 6 to 8 for like four or five years. So I just think it's so funny because you're like this little kid and you're like networking and oh, getting hilarious. gigs. Yeah, what I've were, what was your parents' it? reaction to this? I mean, were they expecting this? Because they were like, yeah, my kid's awesome. Or were they like caught off guard? How, do, how did they react to this? Well, they've always uh, they've always said that they didn't want to uh, commercialize me, you know. They didn't want they they would be fine if I, you know, commercialized myself in the sense where I actually networked and I got profits for what what I was doing, my hard work. But they weren't actively ever putting me out in the music world as sort of this uh, this commodity, you know. I I think that's. Um, a good point to touch on because you see what happens to like these child stars oh, yeah, definitely. who yeah. just like the rest of their life just downhill. Um, are your parents into arts? Like I know there's a Dunbar gallery. Yes, that's um, right. Yeah. So what can you talk a little bit about what your parents do, how they found art? Yeah, so um, my dad is a uh, he's a musician on the side uh, that does, he doesn't really gig, but that's just kind of like a hobby for him. And he's an artist, so he paints, he does all kinds of like renders, stuff like that. And uh, that's yeah. awesome, yeah. And my mom is a, uh, she's a social activist and innovator. Period, we love that. <laughs> so you were introduced to music at 
uh, young age, music and art obviously kind of surrounded you. Oh, yeah. 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 And my dad's always in... hugely into music. Yeah. You know, been listening to music. Listening is a huge part of, you right. know, understanding music. I've been listening to music since I was like four. Yeah. So do you think that influenced you a lot? 100%. 100%. And do your parents play a lot of jazz? Is that their kind of go-to music, or is that more you? Um, well, you know, it's kind of it kind of varies. Um, you know, my mom will put on. My mom doesn't actually play any music, and she kind of like she likes listening to music. You know, uh, so she'll put on you know like the Spotify curated jazz playlists or stuff like that. My dad's definitely more into like the thorough put on albums and stuff like that. Um. But yeah, you know, I, I think I'm more of the jazz guy. And I think because of the amount of jazz I play, it's made them listen to much more. That's, that's so funny that it's, it's the child who's influencing the parents with the music. I think that's really awesome. So, okay, let me, I'm going to look at my notes for this because I want to get it right. You won a bunch of money in 2015 16, from 16. Kellogg's <laughs> Nominate Talent Contest. Yes. Yeah, it was 2016, I okay. think. You actually might be right about that. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, we were in grade 5 or 6. Yeah. Um, when I was in grade 5 or 6, I thought it was impossible to have $100. <laughs> oh, and I thought yeah. that was, no one was could have that. So, ridiculous. how did you, what did, were, in your child brain, was this money like, oh, now I have money, like what? What hit you when you were this? Yeah, so I have this, uh, I have this kind of photo in like the the back, very back of my phone where I have like little buck teeth before my braces and like I'm tiny and I'm just like massive grin holding a check for like 20k and I'm just like, like I don't think my brain ever registered the fact that that was a ton of money for my age, but you know I think what was good about it was my parents never actually just put it in my account. Like, they totally handled the investments all, like, you know, independently, so, like, I never saw it, you know? Right, right. And, I mean, that's probably, that's, that goes hand in hand with the whole, I mean, a lot of these, like, child stars have all this money, and they get to spend all this money, and it really messes them up, so. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Good on your parents, man. <laughs> with your music, who do you think pushes you uh, the most to keep going with it, and to keep going with specifically jazz? Um... My dad. My dad is definitely a, a huge impactor in, uh, in you know, the music that I play and the music that I listen to, and, uh, and the, the more I practice, too, you know? Um, and my mom also handles sort of the side of scheduling teachers and lessons and uh, seminars, stuff like that. You know, I have about three, maybe four piano teachers, like a week. So, <laughs> yeah, so, so um, you know, I think they're both, they kind of go, uh, go in tandem with that. I mean, that's awesome. I think having a solid foundation can really, really help with stuff, especially in such a not solid industry like music. <laughs> so I think that's that's super, super awesome. Um, so I've asked you to prepare a little something to play for us. Sure. Are you cool to do that now? Of course, yeah, I'd be more than happy to. Awesome. I'll turn off my video so it's all you, and then just whenever you're ready. Great. All right. There we go. So, what I'll be playing today is, um, um, it could happen to you. I hope you enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. 
basement. That was so fun. Thank you so much for playing that. Um, okay, so um, when I think about you playing the piano, I kind of think about this one video of you, again, you were some crazy young age, um, playing at Dundas Square. Yes, yeah. And I mean, I, we just saw it there, but also in this video, which I'll link your um, website and your YouTube in the description. Um, you really, you don't just play the music, you really embody it. Um, is this something that like just you found you were always doing? Is it really naturally just like comes to you? Yeah, well, I've always been more on the, uh, the uh, improvisational and compositional side of things. And uh, sort of what comes with that is the, uh, you know, the feel of the music and the ability to sort of power, you know, power ener exert energy through music. So yeah, I, I guess that would be kind of a, a thing that I've been doing for most of my playing. I mean, that's really fascinating that you say that, like, th through the music. I think that's really awesome because I think jazz, you know, is every music genre is so different from one another. But I think especially jazz has so much more passion than a lot of other genres. So I think, like, feeling it is, is so important. And that's really, really awesome. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's definitely up there, you know, uh, passion and energy wise, emotion wise, it's definitely up there with the classical music, for sure. Right. So actually, my next question has to do with improvisation. So you're a fan of bebop. Yeah, definitely. which is a style from the 1940s. And it's, a, I mean, jazz in general has a lot of improv, but especially bebop. And do you find that improv? And do you find that improving is something that is really easy? Like, how did you learn to improvise? That's a great question. And that's actually an incredibly, uh, you know, incredibly use usual question. You know, that question, everyone asks it, you know, is it easy? How do you improvise? You know, how do I do it? Um, it's pattern recognition, you know? If I tell you to, uh, to jam out, play a solo in, F sharp, you'll be like, what the hell are you talking about? You know, <laughs> but I can't do that. But the only reason you can't do that is because the, you don't know which notes are good and which notes are bad. Right. That is literally the only reason everyone can improvise. Everyone can make up melodies. It's not like people just can't, you know, <laughs> it's literally, you just need to know which notes are right and which notes are wrong. And the pattern recognition and confidence to be able to play that. Right. You know? So it's just a lot of, you know, different scales melded together, different aspects of musical theory coming together, and just, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, obviously, developing these skills takes a lot of time. But you were playing at a very, very young age. I started, yeah. <laughs> did, did you find, like, did it just kind of come to you, or, or was it a lot of trial and error? Well, um... So I, yeah, so I'm done all my, I've done my, my fundamentals in musical theory uh, at the R RCM and, um, and I hated doing it. Like it was, well, I mean, no. Okay. So for, from like grade one up to grade six, I just hated doing it. It was just brutal. I didn't understand it. It was math. Right. You know? And this goes out to all the kids that are learning piano out there. Like, like no one likes doing it, you know, <laughs> but once you have these fundamentals under your fingers, uh, then it just expands this whole new world where you can try trial and error. You can try whole new things that just, you would have no idea what to look for beforehand. You know? Right. So put in the work. <laughs> it gets worth easier. It. Worth it. it sucks, but it's worth it. <laughs> that's, that's, that's really awesome. Um, uh, another one of my questions had to do with piano teachers. Um, I'm not, I don't play a lot of instruments. I'm more, you know, a singer and actor. Um, so how, you said you have something like three piano teachers or something crazy like that? Oh, yeah, 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 definitely. Um, I'm in the, uh, right now I'm in the Humber Youth Program for jazz. Uh, so that is, uh, I get assigned, I've, I have two different teachers for that. It's every Saturday, three hours. And um, basically I'll have a, a theory class with this wonderful professor, Jacob Damelin. And then that's an hour, and then I'll go take a 15-minute break, go over to an ensemble class with a, a couple other students, 
And that's by another equally amazing professor, Johnny Griffith. And then I'll go back and do a private lesson for the next hour with Jacob Damlin once more. Uh, so that's two right there. <laughs> <laughs> and then I have, a, uh, I have a personal teacher every Thursday who is the amazing Tanya Gill. And so she teaches me uh, one hour every Thursday. And then I have two hour Jazz FM seminars every Saturday as well. So, but, yeah, I kind of skip those sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, guys. Yeah. Relax. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Mine freaking yeah, blow. Totally let's, like, let's deploy <laughs> that for a second. So, I mean, to me, when I look at you, I'm like, oh, he's at such a high level. What is there to learn? What do you do in these lessons? How, what, what are you being taught? I guess is kind of my big question. <laughs> Um, well, um, there's, there's a ton, there's a huge, <laughs> there's a huge amount of theory, uh, and technical ability and, you know, things like that, that I actually have no idea about, you know, I mean, if, if a real classical pianist were to analyze half of my, you know, articulation and fingering, they would be abhorred. They're like, they'd, yeah, you know, <laughs> so, you know, there's, there's a lot of, uh, crazy fundamental stuff, you know, modal interchange, like stuff like that, you know, um, and harmonic equivalency, stuff like that, you know. But, you know, I, I, I couldn't actually tell you what I don't know, because I, you know, I don't know it. You don't know, you don't know. <laughs> I, I know that I don't know a ton of stuff, but those things, no idea. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's really interesting to hear this, because they're so I feel like with piano you know in my head again is just RCM and there's only so many amount of RCM yeah, gets, books gets you can do it definitely gets crazy yeah so your life is piano and jazz what what else do you what do you like to do is there are there any other instruments you like to play or, or how do you kind of relax away from piano well um I skateboard in the summer I snowboard in the winter that's always fun uh, I love listening to music. I last year on Spotify Wrapped, I got like what ninety-seven thousand minutes listened or something crazy. Oh like, <laughs> um, yeah. So I just kind of, you know, I like to Photoshop things when I'm bored. Uh, I make short films with my friends. Well, I mean, pre-COVID, I made short films with my friends. Right. <laughs> yeah, you know, I just I do I do a, a couple different things. That's it's lovely. Really piano, though, I gotta say. <laughs> That's great. And occasional uh, school work, you know. Right, right. <laughs> How does your um like not immediate family kind of react to this piano guy? Like how do your kind of cousins and uncles and aunts see you? Do they um is it very kind of normalized for them now or Well, there's so much work? media there's so much media out there of me playing. You mm -hmm. know, I have a, a song recently put out on Spotify. Uh, the YouTube videos, the website, everything like that. So I have like distant cousins in like ridiculous places like France and stuff. They know me that I've never met. They're right. just, yeah, that's the jazz guy in our family. Like, I think it's just kind of, you know, they all kind of have a gist of it, but it's always fun to play when everyone's, you know, I'll get some cousins around. They'll be like, play a song, you know? Right. And of course you can just sit down and play. You're like, yep. Did right. <laughs> That's, that's really awesome. So, like we were talking about, um, jazz has a lot of soul and, um, like you were talking about energy and stuff. How do you get inspired? Um, there's no, there is no way to get inspired. This is a thing that, that, uh, that a lot of musicians and artists and, you know, singers and dancers, everything, how do you get inspired? It's like, it's different every time, you know? Right. There's no real way to get inspired. You can't just be like, all right, I'm doing this thing. Now I'm inspired. Let's do <laughs> it. No? Uh, but, you know, I listen, I listen to tons of music. I uh, Sometimes, if I want to get inspired, I will just not play the piano for like three days. And then I'll go back to it. And, uh, and that kind of has, it gives you time to absorb the information that you've been given and uh, just kind of like refresh everything. You know, right. I find that that gives you a very, very good perspective to just drop it for like three days, two days, three days, four days. Don't Play worry. Play better by not playing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You hear that, kids? That's... <laughs> <laughs> Don't do your homework. 
break, you'll be better when you come back to it. <laughs> so, okay, so when you're in uh, lessons and stuff, I feel like it's more of a work headspace. You know, you're learning, you're being corrected, stuff like that. Um, when that's all kind of shut down and away, and you're just, it's just you and your piano, do you take a lot of what you've learned into, like, do you incorporate it in when you're just kind of messing around, or is, is there a different feel to when you're just playing the piano? Yeah, well, I find that's kind of the main, uh, the main way I, I do practice, mm -hmm. is, you know, I'll learn some, some sort of technique, like a tritonal substitution or something, some fundamental, some idea, you know, and then I'll practice it on its own for a while, and then I'll just incorporate it into anything I'm playing at that moment. You know, and I'll try and incorporate it into a, into different types of grooves like Latin, funk, stuff like that, until I really have a feel and understanding of what it's about. Sure. You know? So that, but I'll try and do it with everything. You know, so yeah, I'm learning a Bach piece, and then I'll just modulate and start playing a groove. You know, <laughs> like I don't know. <laughs> I feel like that's such a classic kind of like jazz kid. It's like play Mo play your Mozart. <laughs> He's like no. <laughs> That is, that's too funny. Um, so, what's the hope with this? What's your, what's your big dream? Well, right now, um, the end goal is Juilliard. Yeah. Which is, uh, you know, New York School of Music. And I'm just trying to, trying to book it. Get there. Yeah. ASAP, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, you know? Because even if it doesn't work out, I'll just be in New York. So, <laughs> I think we're <Hey. laughs> But yeah, the end goal is touring musician, you know? I want to be a session artist, a touring musician, and a real a real innovator in the jazz world. Mm -hmm. You know? Absolutely. Um, so I will be expecting tickets, too, when you play in Toronto. Of course. <laughs> when you're touring <laughs> on front row. Woo! <laughs> um, so now in 2020, there's obviously we have... 2021. 2021. <laughs> <laughs> so now in 2021, um, I feel like we feel a lot closer to university and high school sort of slowing down, coming to an end. What are you, what steps are you taking to um, kind of build a stronger rock for when you launch yourself into the future? Well, um, as it stands, I have right now a week five hours of piano lessons, and I work in a piano store. So <laughs> I have never been this uh, music-oriented, piano-oriented, um, I think, in my life. And I really think that this, you know, this, um, this D-Day-esque sort of practice every day, six hours every day, keep going, keep going sort of thing, will inevitably push me, will be the thing that pushes me forward. You, sorry, you say you practice six hours every day? Not every day, no, but okay. I, that's, that is the, um, yeah, I've been known to practice six hours in a day, six, seven, sort of thing. That is crazy to me. Do you... It's not usual, trust me. Do you me. see it as, do, but like, when, when that happens, do you see it as work? I don't know. I see it as a, a mixture. It's, it's fun work, you know. Sure. It's work you, you know. enjoy. It's not, it's not just recreational. When I'm playing, if I'm playing for you know six hours, I'm not playing recreationally. Um, but yeah, no, it's just kind of like improving uh, scales, trying. I'll, I'll play like my entire repertoire twice, sort of thing. Sure. <laughs> so it's always just ready to go. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. So I want to keep it fresh, you know, especially in COVID times where I can't actually gig. Right. It's really important that I just play my entire repertoire, like at least once a week. Yeah. I think that's that's really interesting. You said you play in, uh, sorry, you said you work in uh, a piano store. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm doing my, uh, I'm a co-op student uh, this year, and so I'm doing my internship at uh, Paul Han Pianos, sure. which is a grand piano store and maker downtown Toronto. It's the oldest piano store in Toronto. That's awesome. What do you, yeah. what's what's your sort of uh, role there? Well, I, um, I'm kind of the, uh, if it was a construction site, they'd call me the gopher, right? Because I just kind of bring the coffees, do things for them. But I, you know, I handle a lot of the uh, the business side of things. Sure. So I'll shadow them when they're selling 
pianos and stuff like that. Um, and then I'll, you know, I'll put things in the database, register, stuff like that. And then I'll also be in the workshop and kind of looking at how the pianos are made. Right. And, and like actually hands on, this is how I fix a piano. Oh, yeah. You know, so I can tweak it whenever I want, stuff like that. And that's, that's invaluable. A lot of musicians don't know the inner workings of their instrument, you know. Absolutely. I think that's something that, as a singer, I, where we constantly are talking about because oh yeah you know dia opening your diaphragm and stuff like that it's oh, huge. yeah <laughs> so i think it's kind of that's like a uh out of body physical thing that is is kind of the same but for piano <laughs> 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 that is so that's so cool so we're gonna play a little game okay. before that is there anything you want to add uh no i don't think so um to all the viewers watching if you haven't checked out Emmy's amazing skills out there. Be sure to check it out. And that's all. Let's proceed. Let's keep going. <laughs> it is time to play Quick Quirky Questions. I'm going to put 35 seconds on the clock, and I'm going to ask you as many questions as we can get through, and you just have to answer the first thing that comes to your head. Okay? Yep. Yeah. So let me get my, my timer ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, here we go. Instagram or TikTok? Instagram. Instagram or Snapchat? Instagram. Comedy or action? Comedy. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Spotify or Apple Music? Spotify. Movies or TV shows? Movies. Oscar Peterson or Theo Melis Mar- <laughs> 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 Say it again, I'll, I'll just like, I'll do a little cut, say it again. Thelonious? Thelonious. Okay, yeah. we're gonna- Oscar Peterson or Thelonious Monk? Thelonious Monk. Cake or cupcakes? Cake. No, nice. cupcakes. Ooh, nice car or a nice house? Uh, nice car. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Spring or fall? Spring. Pancakes or waffles? Waffles. What do cows drink? Milk. No, yeah. they drink water. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Walk right into that one. <laughs> you got two seconds to spare. That was so good. Wow. Yeah, you did walk right into that one. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on the show today. It was great to reconnect with you and to learn all about jazz. <laughs> of course. I think you have such a unique view on things, especially, uh, you know, looking at jazz at such a young age, which is so rare. <laughs> so thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. This was so much fun. Yeah, and it was a pleasure to be here. Um, you know, anytime, guys. It was great. Tell the viewers out there. Stay safe, stay happy, stay grooving. See y'all around. Awesome. <laughs>